From exploring a much smaller and older cruise ship than we're used to, to enjoying the beach, and even trying out a trapeze, we just got back from a really different kind of cruise, at least for us. Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line Grand Classica is a ship that runs two night cruises between Palm Beach and Freeport in the Bahamas. And being such a short sailing, we suspected it'd be a bit different, but we chose this sailing for a very particular reason. It's the last one ever, sorta. So our friends at Touring Plans sent us off to board Grand Classic on April 16th for her last voyage under that name, because immediately after this sailing, work began to transform her into the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise, the result of a partnership between Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line and Margaritaville. In fact, we've got another video previewing the changes and touring the Margaritaville Hollywood Beach Resort. So uh, check that out in the links below. It was actually a really neat property. And soon we'll even be on the maiden voyage of Margaritaville at Sea Paradise. In this video, though, we wanted to check out the experience on this 30 year old cruise ship before her transformation. So watch what we did and check out the ship, but be sure to stay to the end and I'll share my thoughts, including who this cruise was right for and how I think the Margaritaville partnership will actually change that. up to the Grand Classica. Take a look. So I just realized the line we're in is for valet and I asked if there was non-valet parking and he said no. Now, I don't mind valet parking except I didn't want a line when we get back and he said well you should get off the ship as early as possible. We've valet parked. It's been probably I don't know 10 minutes 15 minutes. The car is still there. Right there. Uh, this is the line for both registering for your test, I think, or, or maybe just checking in and checking your bags. We don't have any bags checked, but apparently we still have to wait here and then we go for testing. So yeah, they, uh, they sell at 50% capacity right now and they're not gonna be able to up that until they either fix this or testing requirements drop, one of the two. Or maybe they just stop testing at the port. I mean, I like that it was an option, but uh, I thought it'd be a little smoother. Yes. Now they've brought out extra people to test, so hopefully, hopefully we'll get on board soon. I spy Jay from Ship Life. Still checking in. So I guess if you have the uh, concierge package with the priority boarding stuff, you get access to this. So it turns out the area with the blue tent, yeah, that was for concierge check-in. The area with the chairs, where I am now, this is actually where you watch the safety video. Finally, boarding. And we are on board the very last voyage as the uh, Grand Classica. And it's Easter, evidently. Right, heading to our cabin. Cabin's already at three. And uh, it is, I think it's three. Yeah, it's after three. Always not bad. No. It's nicely lit. Bye. Okay. This is our room. All right, simple, but clean. Looks good. It's uh, Ocean View. There are only 10 balcony staterooms on the ship, or maybe 11. Eh, bathroom is small but functional. It's pretty cool actually. They've got like a like a teak in the bathroom. Huh. Well, boarding was a little chaotic. It took a while, but we we're on board. And initial impressions are ship's very clean. Uh, it's actually more spacious. The room was pretty spacious. So this is my first look at any other area that we didn't have to walk through to board. This is the uh, main pool deck. Live music going on. I saw there's a uh, buffet just over to the left. Somewhere there's like a, a grill of some sort. Small pool there, but I think there might be something back this way. Last time we'll see those stacks. 
I assume will uh, be repainted for Margaritaville at sea. All right. This is nice. I actually heard that uh, for Margaritaville Tea, there was going to be an adult-only pool area, but it looks like it's also an adult-only pool area here uh, as well. So not large, but plenty of uh, room around. I think the sailing's only at about 50% uh, or so, but even, I mean, if there were five times as many people, good amount of space. Still walking around exploring the ship. Uh, we're up on deck right now and just thought this island was cool. Look at all those boats pulled up there. Enjoying a beach day. That might be Peanut Island. I'm not sure. I think it's Peanut Island though. If it's not, then I'll put something on the screen here while I say incorrect info. I'm a little hungry. I had lunch. Well, I had a big breakfast. It's too early for dinner. I'm not telling you. So check now, this is their buffet venue on board. And gonna check out and see what's here. Not a ton of options, but it is a weird time. So I get that there wouldn't be a ton of options. Got some Indian food. It said chickpeas, mislabeled, but some vegetarian Indian food, some veggies, mac and cheese, a roll. They had, uh, they had a salad bar that actually looked pretty nice, but I'm trying to get something real quick. I said I was getting a quick snack. Not that I wasn't gonna have dessert. I'm not a monster. Hey, hey, and now we are gonna go alone. And all the way aft, on I think we're on deck 12, is the rock grill. And this is an area that I know is gonna be transformed with Margaritaville. I'm trying to remember the name. I have it in, a, uh, in an email. Might even be on the website, cruisehabit.com. But this is really cool because check this out, guys. You have a grill and you have a bar. And the bars are really well stocked here. Windows and it, and then it's open air. This is really nice. I actually really like this spot. This, this might be my spot. Right above us is that adult only pool area. The Oasis, I think they call it. <laughs> Finally, we are sailing away on uh, our first and, and the very last, really. Say hi to Jay from Ship Life. Make sure you subscribe. There's a link somewhere in here, down there, somewhere, whatever. We're on the our first and the very last sailing of uh, the Bombas Paradise Grand Classica, leaving uh, Port of Palm Beach. Apparently, I have sailed from this port before, but it's been many years. It's a really pretty sail away. You've got, I think this might be Peanut Island over here. I think, I'm not sure. I might have said that in another video. I don't know. But it's a pretty sail away. We're backing out. And uh, we're going to be heading over to Grand Palm Island. It was, uh, it was actually nice and sunny earlier. Now, there, now there's some clouds in the sky. It's all right, though. Going to be a good time. Uh, my hair looks real strange. Should have left the hat on. So one of the interesting things for booking, get uh, five drink vouchers. We have to pick them up at this bar. Uh, this is this neat. I actually kind of like this. There's a stage over there. There's a lot of seating. Uh, it's sort of above an atrium area. It's neat. And I want to say this is called the Anchor Bar. There's not a sign. It's a cool little lounge, though. It is a cool yeah, lounge. I'm so excited let's, to uh, we'll, we'll get our drink vouchers. Later. Took a shower, got the, got the sunscreen and the funk off. And now here in this main area, deck eight, here in nine, right above us, obviously, with this uh, atrium sort of, seem like the, uh, the hot spot areas. Uh, I expect there will be a lot of people going to dinner right now. That's what we're going to be doing in just a little bit is heading to dinner. We'll see how that is. I think we're just going to do the buffet first. Then we will check out some of the other spots because they do have like a grill and pizza and stuff like that too. Okay. Hand washing and then food. Checking out what our options are here. We'll talk to again later. Oil to Bob. <laughs> uh, what is that? That looks like a stuffed pepper, some potatoes, got uh, some fish, some chicken. Ended up with stuffed pepper, some potatoes, some mahi, some, you know what, a few different kinds of vegetables, forgot what it said, and a seafood chowder. Just had dinner at the buffet venue here on uh, the Grand Classica. Uh, Larissa, your take. Okay, 
So, so far what I've liked the best at the buffet was what we had at lunch, which there was a curry that it was labeled as chickpeas, but it was actually peas, uh, but I thought it was really tasty. The rest of the food was fine. Uh, I was a little underwhelming, like there wasn't anything exceptional, but it was fine. What do you oh, think? Uh, overall, not a big variety, not by any means. I want to say it's functional, does the job, pretty good food. I like the fish. I, I'm, I'm a sucker for mahi-mahi, but I'm picky about it. The mahi-mahi was cooked well. I had some, some rice, some things like steak, short steak or something like that with some vegetables. Really, really good. It did the job. Not the greatest food, but good. Yeah, serviceable. Serviceable, functional. I uh, agree. The mahi, usually a mahi at a buffet, and it's really overcooked and dry. Mahi was good. Everything else was just, it's fine. Not going to go hungry. What? Did I say something weird? <laughs> Apparently I forgot to turn my microphone on for a little while here. This is just us enjoying the aft view. No matter what ship you're on, no matter where in the world, always pretty. These hot tubs by that adult only pool area, love the fact that they change colors. Maybe I'm just a sucker for colorful lighting. Ships at night, always like ships at night. Now, this blew me away. That bottle in the upper left, that is Lafroy. It is my favorite whiskey. It is Larissa's favorite whiskey. And you can't get it on Royal Caribbean, a lot of other lines, it's hard to find, but they had it there by the pool. Not a pool drink, but you know what? We'll take it. Come on, everyone needs to get Lafroy. Totally rock that song, or they're about to, depending on where I put this in in the video, but yeah, that was awesome. Now we're about to watch the hotel director, Luis. He plays guitar, and he's like, in his officer. Well, you'll see, you'll see. I don't know what to tell you. Apparently, I really just had trouble unmuting my mic on this particular cruise. Glad it was only two nights. Uh, here, I'm at the shore excursion desk, and I talked to uh, two folks, uh, Angelica and Patricia, and they were really helpful in explaining what our options were. Uh, we ended up booking an all-inclusive at the Viva Wyndham, and it was 100 bucks. But uh, we had a $50 credit for each of us based on that premium package that included drinks and a specialty meal. They made it all easy. They were really great and, uh, and they're fans of Cruise Habit and Ship Life. So hello to Patricia and Helica. Sorry I lost the audio for this part. I had dinner, but I had to try something else. So until midnight, I think it is. You can come over here to a slice above, and it's just a little pizza joint, but it's actually kind of cute. You can you can hear some of the uh, entertainment activities going down below because it's sort of an atrium thing, but it's kind of a cute area. And actually, so they got that screen showing the offerings. Let's show. There is a charge. It's uh, it's ten ninety nine. Yeah, eleven ninety nine. Plus 18%, except for the uh, dessert pizzas last. They also have a number of types of wines here. And they're not using these because there's nobody up here right now, but check this out. They have robots. Next to the pizza place, this Grand Cafe, they have a big specialty coffee menu up there. And, uh, but they've also got, looks like, a few different ki kinds of ice Grapefruit? Wait a second, grapefruit? All right, might have to try that later. <laughs> Our pizza has arrived by robot. Let's see what it's like. 
Well, I had some pizza. Not bad. Not the best, not the worst. Honestly, better than some pizza I've had on cruise ships. A lot of pizza I've had on cruise ships. But then I had to come and try that grapefruit ice cream. And I, I'll tell you, it tastes like grapefruit and ice cream. It's really good. I'm kind of impressed. Nightclub time. And that means we'll probably find Jay here. Probably. Morning. We are queued up in the Encore Lounge. Larissa is improving her posture. <laughs> and we're waiting to uh, be called for our excursion to an all-inclusive. So we are heading out to our excursion. And where you line up for the excursion, they have all sorts of merch. But I gotta say, at least it's practical stuff for your excursion. They had water shoes and shirts and uh, sunglasses. So now we're heading I think to deck three. We have disembarked here in Freeport on Grand Bahama Island. This is my first time in Freeport in probably over 15 years. And I, it's been a lot longer than that since I docked here because I'm, I'm used to tendering. So now we're, I guess, walking to a bus. We just got to the resort, uh, got all checked in, got wristbands and everything for, for drinks and whatnot. And no idea where I'm really going right now. But uh, it was a long bus ride. They, they made like three stops before ours. Really would be nice if they separated out those, uh, those stops because ended up taking like an hour and a half just to get from the port. That looks nice though. Ooh, blue water. Mm -hmm. Can't really see it from here. We'll get there. Went up to the bar and ordered an espresso because I didn't have breakfast or coffee this morning. I mean, I also got a Bahama Mama that they poured like a vat of rum in, but you know, yin, yang. Out here, it's a beautiful day. Got a pool, uh, people hanging out. Oh, we just missed it. They just had some people dancing over here a second ago, but look at that watercolor too. Got these day beds. Pretty chill. It's Easter, hence the uh, bunny stuff. That is some beautiful water. Got another bar over here. Oh, and some food here too. I thought there was just that restaurant inside. So, so views alone, so far, you think the views are justifying the, uh, the ride over here? Because it was kind of, it was a, it was a long ride. ride. It was a long ride, yes. But, yeah. I mean. You can't beat this. No. That's, that's not bad. <laughs> Lunchtime. The restaurant opened at 12.30, four minutes okay. ago. Gonna find out what there is, because still haven't had breakfast, and, yeah. and <laughs> because of this guy and his friends. Drinks are uh, drinks are strong. So we were a couple of drinks in with no food. So yeah, need food. Gonna get interesting. Got some conch salad and uh, other salads here. Desserts. Always check out desserts. What else do I have? A variety of hot stuff here. Started with some fish soup. Got a whole bunch of stuff over here. Jay from Chef Life, he made fun of me for Brussels sprouts. I like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> We're eating the Brussels sprouts. The seagull situation is a little out of control. Now here's the thing, when you're at a beach, there are seagulls, that's cool. Seagulls are neat, they add ambiance. Don't be the person that doesn't pay attention like their hamburger. And then there's a billion seagulls and someone like me is just trying to take a nap on the beach and has to get up from the chair because they're afraid of being robbed by seagulls. So the deal with the water sports, 
you see there's a catamaran over there and I think there's some kayaks there might be a couple left up there there's someone out in the ocean with one a minute ago uh, if you have a wristband so you pay for the all-inclusive thing here you get food you get drinks and you get use of those to hang out in this crystal clear water it's really pretty look at him just waiting to attack <laughs> very Earlier we noticed there's like trapeze and all sorts of stuff up here, but we thought that was for entertainment. Apparently you can just use it. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Oh! Trapeze success ish. Yes. Good job. My first time. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna come back here every 39 years and do it again. And one day I'm gonna get good at this. It's time to head back. And um, I think it, you know, this was a hundred dollars purchased through the uh, through the cruise line. Um, the downside is the ride here. It just takes a long time, especially because they're making other stops. So you don't end up with as much time as you'd like. Food's okay, nothing amazing, but you're not gonna go hungry. Heavy handed on the drinks. If you if you want to try the trapeze thing, that's super cool. I wish we would have found out about that earlier in the day. And uh, I probably would have also taken out a kayak, but I was just a little bit lazy today. Uh, so overall, I don't think it was bad, uh, but I'll tell you what makes it a great deal, in my opinion, is we paid, uh, I probably mentioned, like 100 bucks for 10 drinks, and you get $50 off this. So for 50 bucks, it's a really great way to spend a day, in fact. Just like it took a little while to get here, it's gonna take a little while to leave because that's not the bus we came on. We gotta wait, be on the same bus. We'll see. This is our bus. Some sort of Easter egg thing. Let's see, should I see what this is about? Or should I go out to the adult pool area while we're sailing away? Yeah, I'm going to the pool area. This definitely seems more my speed. I might have to go cool off in there. Or should I have a snack first? Today's cruise theme is the birds. Last day of the cruise before uh, transformation starts place. They, they getting a head start over here? It's a small ship, but there's still places, it's such a short cruise that I haven't even noticed. So you can actually walk all the way forward here. And right above me, there's a, I think it's a sports bar that has like 360 degree views. Kind of reminds me of a Viking Crown Lounge kind of situation. But this is the view all the way forward. Just finishing our turn. That's the port we're just docked at, so we'll be heading out just uh, off to the right. There's so much unused land in this area. I mean, look, that could be so pretty. Or there could be giant bugs there, and I would immediately leave. I don't know. It's the uh, breakwater right at the entrance of the port. Need a little beach over there. Looks like there are some cars over there. There's the pilot boat. They'll follow us along. We've got a pilot on board, somebody uh, very familiar with the local harbor who's an who has a, uh, an unlimited tonnage master license. And then once we are away from this port, that pilot boat's gonna pull right up alongside of the ship and the pilot will step from the, uh, from the ship we're on onto the pilot boat and head away. They do the opposite on the way into port. As we leave Freeport, we can see Crystal Symphony and Crystal Serenity. Forgot which one was which, but those two vessels there. Those are Crystal vessels that are, uh, well, we don't know what's gonna happen. Crystal 
went belly up when Genting ran out of money, the, uh, the, the company that owns them. The ships have warrants out because fuel money is owed, so uncertain. The ships will end up going somewhere. They're, they're in good shape, so they'll get used. So jump in the pool, I probably inserted that clip just a second ago, maybe. And uh, if you've read any of my stuff, like from live vlogs or watch my videos, you probably know. I, I really don't like when cruise lines make you check out towels and stuff. I just think it's silly. It's one of the things I like about premium lines. You don't have to worry about little stuff like that. So I'm out here, I was in the adult pool and there wasn't a towel station. I was like, it's cool. It's a small ship. Where the pools right here? They had a towel station before. I don't see anyone at a towel station. So now I'm just gonna walk to my room wet the trip from Freeport to Palm Beach is very short I'm used to the last night of a cruise if you're leaving from Freeport or Bimini you're going really slow but usually you go really slow and you go in circles I was just about to leave the room we uh we're not moving at all that's different like every ship, there's some retail. Wonderland and Puffs, I think are the names, something like that. Check this out. I mean, this is the last cruise for Bahamas Paradise, like with that brand, right? With that, with that name associated. So $4.95 for a shirt. It's probably a kid's shirt, but I think I might have to get something like that. Duty-free liquor, who doesn't like that? People that don't drink, that's who don't, doesn't like that, but you know what I mean. Oh, and they have a digital photo gallery. I didn't get my picture taken. Ah, I'm a sucker for Legos. What, nothing better to step on than a Lego. Guys, it's the last Grand Classica model, like ever. Someone mentioned it and I thought, oh, well, that's a great idea. Yeah, I want a Grand Classica. It's the last time the Grand Classica is sailing. It's literally the last one. Look, there's an empty shelf right over there. That's where they were. No matter what ship you're on anywhere in the world, sunset at sea is always a gorgeous thing. And this is an interesting sunset because this, this is the very last sunset that guests will ever see from Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line Grand Classica. The next time the guests see the sunset from this deck of this vessel, they'll be on the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise, and uh, and we'll be there. I think we figured out how they're getting the high scores here. That's kind of genius, though. I mean, if you would have thought of that in sixth grade. Oh man, I could get so many stuffed animals and <laughs> trinkets and pogs. I could get all the pogs. All of the pogs. Eating? Got some family feud going on in the Encore Lounge. Easter Bunny is Easter Bunny. Talking about things people do on Easter. Guess well, it's Easter. Makes sense. No. Not my thing, but popular activity here. There's uh, quite a few folks in this lounge playing, watching. I think we're gonna check out Admiral's Steak and Seafood. That's their specialty. And this is, I suspect, what will become JWB Steakhouse. Let's see what we've got here. It's a vegan option, a couple of fish, steak, First course, tuna tartare. And Justin went for the classic. The, the cruise classic appetizer. I love my shrimp cocktail. Uh, a sensible salad before I have three other courses. You know, sensible. Better than I expected. Main course, I got branzino, which is a fish that I, I like a lot. A couple different veggies in there with it. Jay got a filet, and of course, mac and cheese. Always the mac and cheese. I love Larissa mac. went for the vegan option. It's something mushroom. I like mushrooms. Bunch of olives in there. I don't love olives, so I don't know. But always get spinach. Eat your spinach, kids. Dessert is the most important meal of the day. So sometimes I have a first, but not today. Sort of, I had flan earlier. Got a chocolate lava cake. I needed some chocolate going on here. We got strawberry cheesecake. I like strawberry, I like cheesecake. 
and creme brulee. I'm excited. Let's eat. Dinner is over. Not uh, not bad. That was uh, that was the, the best meal I think we've had on on the, the ship. Uh, it does come in at fifty dollars extra per person plus gratuity. However, if you have the premium package, which includes uh, the drinks and that fifty dollars off a shore excursion, includes a meal here. This is an example of the type of thing that I'm wondering if we'll see changed out when uh, this ship becomes Margaritaville at Sea Paradise. I don't know that the Costa era art is uh, is going to work. Well, we'll see. It's kind of neat, so much of the ship isn't being used right now um, between the lower occupancy and I think the upcoming changes that we're just able to explore. And this is a, a conference room, it's a pretty big space. A bunch of other spaces too. And uh, hopefully we can keep messing around and no one tells us to leave. But I mean, if they do, what are they gonna do? Kick, kick us off tomorrow morning? This is just outside the theater. Just outside the theater. It's a, a bar. It's pretty cool. Ah, I can't wait to see this in action sometime. So this is the theater. And I'm not sure we're supposed to be here. They seem to already be doing some work. But uh, there was nothing going on in the theater this cruise. But it looks really nice, actually. So we'll see, we'll see what happens here. I don't think they've been using the, the theater since the return of uh, cruising, but check out these mosaics all along the top there. This is kind of like the art um, in, a, in a hallway I passed by a moment ago, stuff that I suspect has been here since this was the Costa Classica. It looks like, uh, I, I came over to the conference center here and it looks like a couple friends have picked up a second job. Uh, who are you here to see? <laughs> oh, I'm here to see Mr. Sheehan. Oh. All right, this is cool. I can't believe we just found this. And I can't believe it's on this ship. Like, guys, it is the Windows 95 background. There it is. Oh my God. Up on deck 14 is the crow's nest. This is really cool from the outside. This is the venue from the outside that has windows all the way around because it's up higher than everything else. It's detached from everything else. It says the sports bar and then I see there's games. There are televisions. Doesn't seem like anything is going on here right now. Yeah, not even a not even a bartender right now. But I can see this being a pretty cool spot. I should have come up here during the day to see what, uh, what kind of views it offers. Interesting, they call it the crow's nest. That's what Holland America calls their lounge that is all the way forward and up top. Now I have to add weird, more weird tattoos to my collection. John with the Titanic tattoo, we can't beat that. Tonight, the party is instead over in the Encore Lounge, the Glow Party. It is happening here. Getting ready to turn in for the evening. The last night of not only this cruise, but the last night that the Grand Classica will ever be sailing, at least as the Grand Classica. We'll see how disembarkation goes tomorrow. Because this is a bit of an older ship built in 1991, there are certain uh, little things that I find kind of neat, nostalgic, as I may have mentioned. And one of them is the sound in the room. You can hear just this low rumbling of the engine and it's kind of nice at night. Disembarkation morning and we got our stuff. We got out of our cabin about 8.40 or so. There weren't a lot of instructions, any instructions as far as timing, but we figured eh, that should be fine. 
We just were about to walk into the elevator to uh, go down to deck five, disembark, and they said that it's backed up at immigration, so there's going to be a pause. So we'll see how long this takes. And then remember after this, we have to get our car from valet. That was an adventure. They, they told us that they'd paused disembarkation because things were backed up at immigration. So we kind of staged, right? We, we went to a lounge midship and we're just like, all right, we're going to be ready to go. And they, as soon as they started making an announcement, we grabbed our bags, ran down three flights of stairs with our bags so that we could beat the rush, made it right through customs. Uh, that was easy, but just no disembarkation. They're, they're going to have to make some yeah. adjustments. Uh, it was just, interesting. They also, they have the, a big old banner over there for mobile passport control. I went up there with the mobile passport control app and she said, we don't, we don't do this here. So yeah, that was, that was a little strange, but then we, we zipped through there and now we're just waiting for the valet and I'm really hoping that doesn't take too long. Okay, so that was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, there was that delay for disembarkation. If you're looking to get off the ship super early, I, I don't know what the score is in that case. It's 942. I know that's late for a lot of people, but we didn't leave our cabin until 840. We had that slight delay, then we ran down the stairs and we're heading out of uh, the port of Palm Beach now. So successful cruise. And uh, now, you know, I look forward to seeing what it's like in, uh, in another month as Margaritaville at sea, paradise. So ultimately, what did we think? Well, if you're comparing that experience that you just saw that we just enjoyed to a normal cruise line, there's no question. It's not as polished. The food isn't as good and things aren't as modern. If, however, you want to know if we had a nice and relaxing time, absolutely. Uh, in fact, if she was still sailing, there's a chance I would do it again. It was a nice weekend. I want to especially call out the crew members, though. The entertainers, the officers, everyone on Grand Classica. There was no compromise at all there. I, I mean it. They, that's what stood out more than anything was the crew. Every person I interacted with was warm, energetic, and ready to go out of their way to make sure we were having a good time. Now, maybe that's because some of them were about to have a few weeks off during this transformation, or maybe they're recarpeting right now. But uh, here's the thing. Who is this experience right for? That's harder. For someone who's cruised before, they might find that there were just too many things that wouldn't have measured up to a mainstream cruise line. For someone who hasn't cruised, I feel like there's a risk that this wouldn't match what they'd seen on TV or heard about in terms of cruising. And, uh, but I did meet several people, actually, that were first-time cruisers on the sailing, and they absolutely loved it. So maybe my experience is skewing my opinion too much. Once Margaritaville at sea launches, though, I suspect it'll result in not only some improvements to the ship and guest experience, but also the brand. Not knowing who this cruise was right for was in part because the brand lacks identity. I mean, if you've heard of Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line, what do you think? Is it anything good? Is it anything defining? Now, I always say that every cruise line does something better than all of the others, and I'm not sure what that is with Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line, at least not in the experience that we had. With Margaritaville uh, and, and that partnership, the theming, entertainment, and cuisine, I, I can see the line taking on a new identity that attracts and pleases not only Parrot Heads or Jimmy Buffett fans, but anyone looking for a casual, lively, and short tropical getaway. Of course, there's just one way to know for sure, and that's to try it out. So we'll be on the first maiden voyage of Margaritaville at Sea Paradise, which was recently pushed back to May 14th, 2022. And I cannot wait to share that experience with you. Candidly, I can't wait to go on a cruise, but I look forward to sharing with you too. If you're interested in joining us on that cruise or want to join us on any other cruise, check out the links in the description below for dates and get a quote from our friends and partners at Touring Plans Travel. Make sure to like, subscribe, and click the little bell there. Uh, reach out in the comments for any cruise questions at all. You can find more information at cruisehabit.com and on social media. Just search Cruise Habit. We look forward to talking ship with you again real soon.